Good morning, church. I'm glad to have you all with us this morning to worship God together. Can I request um, uh, everyone who's sitting behind, if you can come forward and fill up the seats in front, that'd be really nice. So, um, just wanted to read from scripture. If you can look to Psalms 119, verses 89 and 90. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Father God, we look to you this morning, oh Father. We thank you for everyone who's gathered here in your presence, Lord, that you will lead us this entire week we thank you for these 11 beautiful months that you've been with us Lord you've been with us every step of every single minute of every day of oh father it's because of your grace and mercy that we stand here today we thank you for every trial that we had to go through and for being with us and strengthening us, Lord Jesus, through those difficult times. Father, the only reason we stand here today in your presence is because of you. And we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness in our lives. We can't, we can't imagine our life without you, O oh Father. Because you are our everything this morning Lord even as we worship and soak in your presence we pray that you will speak to us oh Lord and give us a word in our hearts which we will take back and keep with us we thank you for this comfort that surrounds us Lord and we pray O oh Lord that you will lead us through in Jesus name we pray Good morning, church. Can we all rise up to our feet? Beautiful people of God, let me remind you that we serve a faithful God this morning. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that we serve a faithful God? Would you shout a praise unto Him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Word of God says, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Let this verse remind us that whatever situation that we are in, whatever situation that you find yourself in, that you can always put your trust in the Lord. For our Lord is an unfailing God. Amen. He never fails us. His unconditional love for us. The Word of God says His unconditional love, His unfailing love is better than life itself. And there is no power above the sky or anything below has the power to separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Lamentations, Lamentations 3 verse 22 says, Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. 
Great is your faithfulness. How many of you believe that God's mercy prevails in our hearts this morning, in our lives this morning? He is a faithful God. If you are here, you are here for a reason because God is faithful and He has done something in your life. So I want you to celebrate God this morning. Put your hands together and welcome Him for His presence is here. His love overflows in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's sing together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So put your hands together as we sing this together. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Come on, church, lift up your voices. Blessed be your name. When I found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing that you pour out, come on. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness, when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name. Of the Lord, blessed be your name. Lifting up our heart to Him, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Come on, let's do this together. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name, blessed be your name, on the road marked with suffering, though this pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Let's put our hands together and sing this, every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. He's a God who takes away. There could be 10,000 reasons for us not to praise Him, but there are a million reasons to pr praise Him. Hallelujah. He's a God who gives and takes away. So we're going to sing this together. Amen. We're going to sing. You are the God who gives and you're the God who takes away. Come on. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will this together you give and take away you give and take away you give and take away my heart will choose to say but blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name we give you glory blessed be the name of the Lord He's worthy of all our praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's do this. 
You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Can we give a shout of praise unto him this morning? For he deserves all the praises. For he deserves all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you are worthy of all our praises. So many times we're guilty of giving the importance to the worldly things. We worship and praise the materialistic things that we have or possess. But the only one who deserves everything is Jesus. Everyone who deserves and the only one who is worthy of our praise is Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God and God, word of God says in Psalms 19, verse 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of the Lord, and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Hallelujah. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. That's what 1 Chronicles 16, verse 25 says. And it says, He is to be feared about all gods. And there is nothing above him. All powers, all dominions submit to his authority. So let's sing this together. You're worthy, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Lord, thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame, and love you came and gave amazing grace. Every hand's lifted up. Thank you for this love, Lord. Declare it. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Let's sing it. Worthy. For the cross, thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you pay, bearing all my sin and shame. And love you gave, and gave a amazing grace. Thank you for this love.
of our praise, Jesus. You are worthy of everything, Father. So we submit ourselves to you, Father. We bow down at your feet. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you. Can we, can we sing this one more time? Just the voices. Worthy is the Lamb Seated on the throne We crown you now with many crowns You reign victorious Let's sing it louder High and You're the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, let's declare it. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. The Lamb. Can we give a praise unto Him this morning? Hallelujah. If you believe, if you believe that He deserves all the glory and praise, can we put our hands unto Him? Hallelujah. Lord, we want to feel your presence, Father. And we already feel it, Father. We want, oh, we want to oh, we be overwhelmed by your presence this morning, Jesus. We want to be overwhelmed, Father. Put a burden in our hearts this morning to be sensitive to your spirit. The word of God in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And what a promise that is for us. It says to not fear and when the devil is trying to attack us with fear and the devil is trying to attack us with things that we shouldn't be afraid of God is telling us God is reminding us this morning to not fear or be dismayed for my presence will go before you That's the promise we have this morning because in his presence there is freedom in his presence there is hope in his presence there is joy there is liberty and there is no more fear there is no more pain hallelujah Yeah. 
here in your presence everything lies before presence there is no more pain here in your presence is everything that I have to gain let's sing this together found in your hands fullness of joy every heart lifted up found in your hands fullness of joy every fear suddenly wiped away All of my gains, all of my gains, not fade away. Every crown, no longer on display. Here in your presence, heaven is trembling in all of your wonders. Heaven is trembling in all of your wonders.
something passed before you. We bow before you, Lord. We bow before you, O Jesus. We bow before you. words you're using, whatever language, can we just open up our mouth and shout out your cries of praise to him. exalt you on high. We give you the praise that you are due, O oh Master. You are worthy of all of our praises. Of every breath we can breathe, O oh Master, you are worthy of it, O oh Father. So we bless your name and we praise your name, O oh Father. Be exalted in our midst, O oh Lord, Father. We thank you for your tangible presence that is in this place, O oh Father. Thank you, O oh Father. Thank you for coming here, O Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, O Master, for the beautiful way in which you've led us these past 11 months, O Father. We wouldn't be here, O Master, in this place if it wasn't for your grace, if it wasn't for your faithfulness in our lives, O Father. We thank you and we bless your name, O Father. We are nothing without you, O Father. We are nothing without you, O Master. Thank you for all the things that you are doing and you continue to do in our lives, oh Father. And Lord, we're sorry, oh Father, if we haven't, oh Master, given you the respect, the praise, and the worship that you are due, oh Father. We're sorry, oh Master, for not spending enough time, oh Lord, Father, in your presence. We're sorry, oh Father. We're sorry for our shortcomings, oh Master. We're sorry, oh Father for becoming so busy with the things of this world, oh Lord, Father. Lord, we're sorry, oh Master. But Lord, as your children, we shamelessly come before you today, oh Lord, Master. We just want to surrender ourselves, oh Lord, Father, at your altar, oh Master. Church, can we do that today? Can we resubmit our lives and recommit our lives to him? A lot of times we've made many promises to God. At the start of every year, we say we'll do many things. But then we fail to do them. But let this year be different. Let it not start just at the beginning of next year. Let it start now. Let it start at this very moment. Can we commit our lives back to Him? Can we surrender, Lord? We surrender, O oh Master. As a family, we come together and we surrender, O oh Lord, Father. We come and we lay ourselves down humbly at your altar, O oh Father. If there's any hint of pride in us, O oh Father, Lord, would you destroy it, O oh Master? If there's anything in our lives, O oh Lord, Father, that is not pleasing in your sight, things in our lives that is taking away the time that we ought to give to you, O oh Lord, Father, would you convict us of it, O oh Master? 
would you show us those areas oh father would you touch those areas oh master and give us the strength to give them up oh master because there is real joy only in your presence oh master so lord i pray oh master this is our desire oh master that we would yearn for your presence oh master daily let it not just be a sunday thing oh lord father where we come every sunday and we ask oh father and resubmit our life oh lord master but this submission let it be an everyday thing oh father would you do a new thing in our lives oh lord father would you anoint us again once more oh father would you pour out your anointing on us oh master holy spirit of god would you come would you come what the plans and the purposes that you have for us in your kingdom would you show it to us oh master Would you give us the strength that we need, O Lord Father, to walk in that way that you have prepared for us, O Master? We recommit our lives, O Father, at your feet, Lord Jesus. You take complete control. May our lives be a testimony, O Father, that when people see us, when people meet us, O Lord Father, I pray that they will be able to see you in us, O Master. That we would reflect your characteristics, that it will be your light that we shine, Jesus. that our lives be a testimony for you oh lord master that we would be able to share the gospel oh lord father through our lives would you work in and through our lives oh master church can we can we open up our mouths and pray for this can we pray for this that the lord would use our lives mightily for his kingdom lord i pray oh master that you would give us the boldness that we require oh master to master to preach preach your gospel oh lord father into this world to speak into the lives of others oh lord father to speak the truth in this world oh lord father where where there are so many wrong doctrines oh lord father there's so many things oh lord father that the world is teaching the wrong things oh lord father i pray oh master that we will be able to carry the truth in the midst of all of that lord father and speak it boldly oh lord father you do not choose the equipped oh lord master but you equip the chosen and we know oh lord father that every one of us over here is chosen by you oh lord father and i pray that you will equip each and every one of us over here oh lord father to speak your truth into the world lord father to speak your gospel give us the boldness oh father help us to bring lives unto you oh lord jesus help us to bring lives unto you oh lord father and let it start right from our families lord father the people in our families who don't know you as yet Help us to extend your love and your grace and your mercy that you have shown us, Lord Father. So graciously, you've shown us. Help us, Lord Master, to be channels of that, Lord Father, to the people around us. Lord, especially at this time, we pray for our city, O Lord Father. We thank you so much for the respite that you've given us from the rain, O Lord Father, for the lovely weather this morning. We thank you and we praise you for it, Lord Father. But we also remember the families and the people who have... been troubled because of the rain oh lord father the people who don't have the resources to take care of themselves at this time lord we pray for your hand of protection to rest upon them would you restore unto them the things that they have lost oh lord father and we pray oh lord father that your protection will rest over our city have mercy on us oh father have mercy on us lord jesus and i pray oh master that with all the blessings that you've given us oh lord father i pray oh father that we will oh master Look out for the people that we can help, oh Lord Father. Share the things that you've given us. Look out for our fellow brothers and sisters, oh Master. We are pulled and uplift our city into your hands. As we keep praying for people, let's also pray for some of our brothers and sisters who have asked for us to pray for them. We're praying for Thivya Shadrach. She's severely um, struggling from mental illness. We also pray for Kim who had a head injury. Let's pray for his healing. Let's pray for strength and stability for Debbie for healing from Parkinson's. Lord, at this time we uplift our dear brothers and sisters, Lord Father. Church, whichever point you are able to remember, whichever person the Lord is putting in your heart, can you open up your mouth and pray for them? Lord, there is no sickness that is too big for you, Lord Father. There is nothing that is impossible for you. You are the God of the impossible. If you say once, Lord Father, it will be done. And in that faith we come oh Lord Father asking for healing for our dear brothers and sisters oh Lord Father. 
your word says a lot father when true a lot father pray in agreement and ask of you a lot master it will be done so as a family a lot father we come in agreement and we ask for our brothers and sisters you are jehovah rafa a lot father would you heal them oh god this is the house of miracles a lot master may your miracles flow in this place a lot father through your presence oh lord jesus there is no mental mental illness cannot stand in your presence lord father there is no anxiety no depression that can stand in your presence lord jesus would you give lord father clarity of mind would you give joy lord father would you give peace master would you alleviate their pain lord father would you give them comfort oh master would you give them peace and would you pour out your healing on our dear brothers and sisters lord father We pray for those of us here, O Lord Master, who are suffering from some sort of illness, O Lord Father, sickness. You know what we are going through, O Father. We pray, O Master, we humbly come before you and ask that would you meet us at our point of need, Father. We surrender our lives unto you, O Lord Jesus. You take complete control. You work in and through our lives. Let your will alone be done, O Father. Be thou glorified. be thou glorified we magnify your name you are worthy of all of our praises father we want to resubmit our life unto you you direct us in the way that you want us to go a lot father in jesus name i pray amen amen church you may be seated the women's prayer group which meets every wednesday warmly invites all women to join their special christmas gathering on 4th December at Little Mount Kids Service Hall. If you'd like to be part of it, please register using the link bit.ly/gathering or visit our help desk for more details. Dear parents, Metro Missions has introduced a wonderful concept called C2C, where children reach out to children. This Christmas season, we are partnering with them to gift children in need across the city with Christmas goodies. Each child would have received a gift box. So, please contribute what you can and return the boxes by December 14th. Attention young people, do you have a passion for evangelism or a heart for the lost? This Christmas season, join us in sharing the good news with children from slum communities. Let's bring the love and joy of this season together on the 15th December at 5 p.m. Scan the QR code or register using the link bit.ly/youthchristmasoutreach. Marriage Bureau is taking a short break for the month of December. We'll be back starting 4th January 2025. December is here and we are excited to announce our much awaited Christmas play. Mark your calendars for 22nd December. It's a special treat you don't want to miss. The play will be happening during all three services, so make sure you're there along with your friends and colleagues to celebrate the joy of Christmas with us. This month's prayer guide is all about preparing for a new season. It's a perfect time to reflect on God's promises and get our hearts ready for what's ahead. You can grab a hard copy from an usher. download it at bit.ly/nlagcpg Our 2025 desktop calendars are here to help you plan your year ahead. Each calendar is priced at just rupees 125 and is available at the counter. So grab one today. Don't forget to check out the discount sales at the bookstore running until 31st December. For more details, updates and for online giving, log on to bit.ly/nlag community Good morning everyone How many are happy that we have entered December I think everyone's happy right for some it's like year end for some it's uh, the christmas somehow it's a happy moment and how many of us I know uh, so this would be a mixed feeling how many are happy that it's cool in chennai right see <laughs> Everybody's happy. All right. <clears throat> so, first of December, we want to welcome and uh, pray and wish 
all those who are celebrating the birthdays and anniversary so all who are celebrating your birthdays if you could stand up we want to wish you and uh, pray for you that's wonderful wonderful oh boy that's a lot okay all right let's everyone give them a um, warm welcome right so what are we going to say we're going to say a shout a happy birthday at the count of 3 okay 1 2 3 happy birthday all right please be seated for some time all those who are celebrating your wedding anniversaries if you could stand it would be nice anyone wonderful okay so a double season of uh, celebration for you guys all right so 1 2 and 3 we are going to welcome them happy wedding anniversary right 1 2 and 3 happy wedding anniversary please be sta- uh, please remain standing those who are celebrating your birthdays if you could also stand we want to pray for all of you wonderful so those next to them just just lift your hands towards them touch them bless them stretch your hands towards them a wonderful whatever the lord is leading uh to to you to pray for them bless them just bless them what blessing you would like to have bless them right so just just go ahead and be let be a cheerful blesser thank you father for this wonderful moment we thank you lord for our father, uh, for our uh, brothers and sisters and elderly like our fathers and mothers we just want to thank all of them we want to thank you for bringing them into our lives we thank you lord for bringing them into our community that we are like one family we thank you father lord we we want to thank you lord they are celebrating so many years and so many years of experiences so many years of wonderful things so many years of your care over them so many years of your prayers answered whenever they called out to you we thank you we thank you father we pray all those who are celebrating their birthdays lord father god this new year let it be a wonderful year for them a year much better than the previous oh lord god a year where they will they will have new encounters with you a year where they will experience you a year where they'll have more clarity of what you want to do for them lord we pray that this year their prayer would be and their desire would be to come closer to you father we pray that this year lord we pray as one family that your spirit shall shall be filling them let them be overflowing with your spirit thank you lord we pray a lot father you know the desires of their heart fulfill them lord father answer them lord father let them let them know you more than anything that they can receive is you are you speaking to them father what more greater thing than we can get than you speaking to us and we hearing your voice and we pray that blessing for them We pray for all those who are celebrating their anniversaries oh lord god this wonderful couple that you have joined together to fulfill your plan to fulfill your wish to fulfill lot of things father we pray that their love towards one another will only grow much more stronger father we pray we thank you lord for all the things that you have brought into their life we pray a lot that when they sit together oh lord father and look up to you we pray that you will reveal yourself to them father we pray lord protect them because in this world where satan is trying to come and destroy marriages father i pray that you would be the third bond of their marriage protecting them standing strong that they will together call out on your name they will together fulfill your plan they will together commit their life to the service of the lord and they will help one another father i pray there will be more tolerance in their lives lord father god that their one's weakness be other's strength and the other person will understand it and be patient over the other weaker person lord we pray that they will grow stronger in you father god we thank you once again we submit all of our brothers and sisters into your hands Lord we pray that you will bless them immensely sevenfold blessing spiritual blessing mental emotional blessing physical blessing financial blessing sevenfold blessing that comes from your throne upon all of them lord father god 
that they would lack nothing they would not lack any spiritual gifts that they require they would lack lack nothing that is needed for them to glorify your name and to proceed with your life on earth lord father god we pray that they will be found favored in their house in the community in their offices colleges wherever they are they will be immensely found favored just like how we read in your word lord god jesus was found favored in the eyes of god and man all of them over here lord father who are standing will experience the same favor in your eyes and the in the eyes of every person whom they associate with lord father thank you lord may your spirit be with them in jesus name we pray amen amen please be seated we would request the ushers to take up the offering Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus the name above every other Jesus the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Oh we live for you We sing Jesus Holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me singing jesus jesus the name above every firm foundation can we all rise up to our feet as we sing this together you are my firm foundation jesus so i will build my life upon you father so that i can put my trust in you and you never fail upon us let's sing this together oh i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken come on church and I will build my life upon your love it is
all but my trust And I will put my trust in you For you are my firm foundation Can we sing this? Lord, I will put my trust I will put my trust in you I will put my trust For you are my firm foundation For you are my firm foundation Jesus is Holy Spirit But I put my trust in you, Jesus what else can I do, Jesus? For you are my source of trust. And I will build my house upon you. And I will build my life upon you this morning, Jesus. But that's who you are. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? When you are here, Jesus, in your presence. In your presence. Start a praise the name of Jesus here in this place this morning. I want all of you to declare the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this new month. Thank you, Lord. You have sustained us. Father, you have led us thus far. And we want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have not let us, uh, Father, to be shaken. Oh, Father, we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This morning, Jesus, we pray that you would once again speak to our hearts. Oh, Lord, prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, even as we have gathered together, Lord, I pray for healing power of Jesus to manifest in this place. Father, healing power of Jesus. Uh, Jesus to manifest in this place I pray oh father every lung infection in the mighty name of Jesus father it will Lord Jesus be uprooted Lord every infection in the body Lord blood infections be removed in the mighty name of Jesus I pray oh father every breathing difficulties in the mighty name of Jesus will subside we pray for healing we pray for healing we pray for your power to manifest in this place oh God Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together. We pray, O oh Father, that you would, uh, through your Spirit, convict our hearts, speak to our hearts, renew our minds, O oh God, this morning, that we may understand, uh, Lord, your words, and we pray that, Jesus, that we would be able to yield to what you are about to speak this morning. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I request you all to be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. A twelfth month. How many of you are excited? Hallelujah. Still, uh, I don't uh, see that you are excited uh, here in this place. Twelfth month, aren't you excited? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. This morning I want to talk about uh, this uh, theme, God confidence. Why it is uh, important that uh, we need to learn the subject this morning is because the world is talking about something that is contrary to what the Lord is wanting us to understand and believe. When we talk about God confidence, is the world talking about God confidence too? No. The world is uh, talking about self-confidence. Wherever you go, you see that the world is for training and equipping people to have self-confidence. But I'm here to say that God is actually in the process 
of breaking our self confidence and building his confidence in us amen and that is how we have to understand you no know, while the uh, while the world is uh, going so hard in helping people to understand hey you can be so confident in yourself and you got to do certain things in order to portray in order to display that you are a confident person that foundation on which they try to train people to gain confidence it is so fragile it is so shaky you know why i read an article uh, i think few months back regarding uh, developing self confidence it is all about how we need to look how we need to present ourselves on the outside you dress sharp you uh, have to have some uh, good body postures you need to have uh, no uh, a, a a good look on the outside and you got to believe in your own strength your talents and uh, and build your muscles also eh? the more you work on your body it influences your mind so all of these things that the world is teaching and talking about but i am helping you to understand think about it okay okay you have really dressed sharp uh, you have a good body posture and uh, you are really banking on your skills and talents imagine that you are going to face an interview okay and you sit in front of the interviewer and uh, no after the introduction he asks you a question which you don't know how to answer what will now happen the moment you realize hey i've prepared i came neatly dressed i have all those things uh, know what the world taught me that i have to carry myself as a confident person but with one question your confidence is what crushed because we are innately weak people we are what weak people and that is why in the bible if you read again and again you will come across this one word do not trust in the riches of the world do not trust in uh, people do not trust in earthly powers do not trust in human strength and all of those things but trust in the lord at all times i want to begin this uh, meditation of god confidence sermon with this uh, one scripture from jeremiah chapter 17:7 to 8 i want all of you to open up your bibles and turn with me to jeremiah chapter 17:7 and 8 but blessed is the one who trust in the lord whose confidence is in him two words you see trust and confidence these are very much interconnected but then they are distinct words and concepts as well so why i started by saying you need to trust the lord at all times when you trust the lord at all times your confidence is shown on this person so just to give you more understanding about these two words trust is more relational it is about a person about that person's character about that person's integrity about the way in which he behaves it is about the person but confidence is about what that person can do so trust is more relational and confidence is more situational so even in our relationships with uh, anyone out here you see that trust is not built in a day yes or no ha huh. you need to really look at that person for a period of time and you see that this person can really be trusted and then only what you start to have confidence in that person to share to take them out it doesn't happen in day one so when you say that i trust in the lord at all times the evidence is how much confident you are in this person so you can simply say i trust in the lord but then without confidence you are carrying your life that means you are in contradiction you say you have trust but then actually you don't have 
confidence. So today, we will learn four principles and we will have probably our lives getting retrospected, analyzed, that can we really say that I am really confident about this Lord? I say I trust in Him at all times, but then do I really have confidence? The word here, it beautifully says, the confidence is this. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to. These are written about the person whose confidence is in the Lord. Who's trusting the Lord and whose confidence is in the Lord. Imagine a year of drought. People will be running from one place to another to look out for food, for water, for shelter. But then a man whose confidence is in the Lord, he will not fear a drought season. Because he knows the one whom I believe and trust, he will somehow take care. When heat comes, he doesn't worry. It doesn't affect him. While all of them are worrying about the situation, about the condition, his heart is fixed on the Lord. He has confidence. My God will do it for me. That is confidence. Trusting the Lord when everything is good is okay. But trusting Him at all times need so much of relationship that you bank on this person. You have extreme confidence that he will somehow make it possible. And that is why in a, in a summer season, in a year of drought, when everything is crashing and come, crumbling, the confidence that you have in your Lord should never be shaken. Because the life that we're living here on this earth, it is not about having our own confidence, but then our confidence comes from the one who has given his confidence in us. So we are going to learn from Psalm 27. I want all of you to open up your scriptures to uh, Psalm 27. This is a psalm that, uh, where David talks about his confidence in the Lord. And we are going to learn uh, four principles from David's life. Out of all the characters in the Bible where they have displayed their confidence in the Lord, I somehow feel that David stands apart. It is not that the rest of the Bible characters, they didn't display this kind of a confidence in the Lord. No, no, no. But then while you read the scriptures again, the Psalms again and again, the kind of confidence that David had in the Lord, it is something that we need to capture and learn. Are you all ready to learn? So the scriptures that we are going to read, it is not just for you to see, but then we are all going to read it together this morning. And then I will try to explain one after the other. Right? So let's read the first three verse, uh, verses in Psalm 27. Are we all ready? Yes? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is, my, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident in my God. So while David is uh, writing this psalm, he's not sitting in the palace for all of us to understand the kind of a background so that you will be able to appreciate this, uh, this writing, this, uh, this poem, what uh, David writes. Y you would really be able to understand, ah, huh, this is not easy. Probably some of us might be thinking David was in the palace. No, no, no. David was running for his life. An enemy camp is coming against David and the situation is 
any moment any time they will capture david they want to put an end to his life so he was running he was in a hideout he was running moving from one place to another and he knows any time my enemy can capture me my life is under threat while he is in this kind of an isolation he says the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear he is talking to god the lord is my stronghold of my life of whom shall i be afraid when he is saying strong oh lord you have built a fortress around me and my enemy will not be able to touch me without your permission confidence in the lord and i kind of uh, no i'm amazed when i read this uh, particular psalm again and again he says though an army besiege me when they come to capture me my heart will not will we be able to say that think about it and uh, the next statement is even more wonderful i want you to capture this david says lord even if war breaks out yet i will remain confident confidence so most of us when we are running when we are threatened in our life when we know that there are challenges with people around us while we are running from one place to another imagine you put yourself let us put ourselves in this place and and imagine if we have to praise and if, if we have to seek the lord our prayers would have been lord i pray we don't have so many people out here the enemies are coming it's a huge army against me i have only hundreds of trained men with me and i don't have the capacity and ability to take hold and to position myself against this huge army god let them retreat let them go back let not war break out would have been our prayers but david here because he has so much of confidence in the lord he says even if war breaks out still i will be confident in my god see the confidence i'm trying to help you understand the kind of confidence that we need to have in our lord how many of us would be able to pray how many of us would be able to seek and say to the lord lord even if something that i don't expect to happen in my life even if it happens worst case still i will be confident because you are my light you are my salvation you are my stronghold and you will not give me to my enemies as i know and i remain confident so while everything is going good it is easy for us to sing the lord is my light my salvation but then when you are running for your life when you don't know what is going to happen the next moment will you be able to say lord i don't know anything can happen to my life any moment because i am surrounded by such situations and people but i remain confident of this lord that you are my stronghold and i will not fear so the lesson number 1 the principle is during the most difficult seasons of our lives if we truly trust in the lord and if we say that we are people who are confident in the lord will we be able to praise and declare god and say lord you are my light i will not fear to whom shall i be afraid of god i will not i know that there are thousands of people who are coming against me but yet i will not fear I will not give my heart to be captured by fear but let faith arise I want to declare because the one whom I am serving the one whom I know is one who has given me salvation and he will save me Would you be able to sing out and praise God and say God this is who you are and I want to trust you for this you have not only said who you are but then i am confident that you are such a person who will come who will come through who will what do things in action because that is the confidence that i have in you god 
Are we able to declare the praises of God and having confidence that whom I'm declaring that my God is, I truly believe He is the one. He is my stronghold. He is my salvation. He is my light. If He is my light, darkness cannot come and touch me. It cannot come near me. If He is my salvation, I will be saved. And nobody can destroy me. If He is my stronghold, nobody will be able to touch me. Confidence. Praising God. Because you know who your God is. Number two, Psalm 27, 4 and 5. One of the most well-known scriptures. But then I pray that God would help us to have an understanding of the background for us to deeply reflect on this particular scripture that we probably know by heart. David is running for his life. David is um, in a place where his life is at stake. Any moment, anything can happen. Now we'll read. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His, in His presence, He will keep me safe. He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. The summary statement is this. In God's dwelling place, there is safety, security, supply, and success. One thing I desire that I may gaze upon your beauty and I want to put myself in that place where I will find safety, shelter, security, and supply. Lord, that is where I want to Go. That is where I want to be found. Think about it. The confidence, if you really trust the Lord, the first place where you want to go when, when things are not looking that great, when things are getting tightened up, the first place is what? Going to the dwelling place of God. Because in the day of trouble, I know He will keep me safe in, my, in His dwelling place. I just imagine, like, this is an Old Testament saint of God. And he is talking about God's dwelling place today in the New Testament, the New Covenant times. We have the liberty of calling Him Abba Father any moment from any those days, they need to go to a place and that place was called as the dwelling place. Today, the Lord is dwelling inside of us through His Spirit. How much privileged are we that we can keep calling Him any time, any number of time, any moment to you call Him. So, I was just imagining the story while... David now is sensing that the enemy camp is coming closer. They are inching closer to capture him. What should have been his strategy? What should have been his mindset normally for a normal person? Called all the men who are trained for battle. Probably have a discussion and then find out what we should do in order to manage the whole situation. Try to retrospect how much, how many people they have, how many people we have. How can we manage this whole situation? Can we plan like this? Can we do like this? Can we strategically move like this? All of those things could have been a worthwhile strategy at, for that moment. 
he didn't do anything of that, but he runs into the presence of God and says, Lord, this is the place I want to. I am actually baffled because he is not turning to any other person. He's not going anywhere. He runs into the presence of God while he knows any moment the enemy's attack will be there. Imagine when uh, you know, in your company you're working and uh, something is happening and you didn't expect and you are losing control of the work that you're doing and you know you have put in all of your hard work and you are now going to what? The next person, the next person, the next person to your boss, to your mentor, to your seniors. Hey, how sh th would you do that? Yes, but how many of us would we run and say, God, before even looking at what I have, God, confidence is about not what I have, but without having anything, I still trust in the Lord. I have confidence. Self-confidence is about what you have. God, confidence is about what you don't have. I don't have, but I still believe in God that He will come, that He will do, that He will take care, that He will give that supply. That is what God wants to build inside of us. Hey, I know you don't have, and for the very reason, precisely, I have put you in a situation where you will realize you don't have anything, but still there is an opportunity for you to have confidence in me. So this is a special month for us. <clears throat> Why? Because 13 years back, when I got married, uh, my wife was not working at that point in time. But life was becoming a little bit challenged. Primarily because we were not able to have the kind of finances to run our family. It was, it was in 2011. So three months, four months after getting married, we come to a place that every month, the last week, our bank balance was zero. The concern for us is not primarily that we want to have things, but then if people walk into our house, we are not able to say, can you please stay with us? Can we go out? We want you to take we want you to come out with us. We want to provide you dinner. We are not able to lovingly show hospitality to them. We somehow know, are praying inside of our heart. Somehow they should leave. <laughs> Lord, what is this, Lord? Huh? We are not able to really host them well. On the inside, we can't really, we know we are, we are disappointed that we are not able to kind of love them the way we should have loved them because we are only looking at the situation. So it deeply disturbed us. So once in the month of November, after four months of our marriage, I want to thank the Lord because the Lord didn't direct me to any other person for help. The Lord directed me to His presence. So I went, I prayed, I said, Lord, I want 10,000 rupees more every month to manage my family and especially for the people who are coming home. November month I prayed. December month, my wife got an offer. She was not having work for almost two, two and a half years. November I prayed. December, this company called her for an interview and she was selected. And when they rolled out an offer, in the offer letter, her salary was 10,000 rupees. And now my wife comes and, and she's excited. And she comes and says, ah, finally made it, praise be to God. And I told her, I prayed for this amount, you know. Now my wife is disappointed. What kind of a person you are? You should have prayed for more. You don't have confidence in the Lord that he will give me. Then I have to tell her that I'm also learning. 
I am learning to ask of the Lord. I am growing. So yes, that is very important. And I think when we pray, God also validates our prayers. Is this guy really exaggerating? Huh? By quoting certain things that is not even happening. The Lord made a provision knowing that this guy actually what? Needs. So praise be to God. But then there was also on the flip side, she was not a permanent employee. She was... Uh, an employee who had to sign a bond for two years. So she was a temporary employee in that company. Two years by this time, God blessed us with our daughter Michelle as she was also growing up. And that time came for the company to make her as a permanent employee. The day came. So we were all excited. Huh? This, is, this is my message for you. Even before something could happen, we were having a discussion in our home. If this happens, if I am being made as a permanent employee, then my salary will be standardized. It will be normalized. I will have this much of amount as an increase. So we can buy Michelle these things, which we were not able to buy all this while. We can go to this place, which we were not able to... So, in our mind, we are already what? Building certain things even before we could receive. Confident. Two years, I've worked hard. Two years, I've done all the hard work. But it is time for God to what? Increase. Honor me. And we were all excited that morning. We prayed and she left. Lo and behold, while she is returning home, she was in tears. And now I'm curious to understand what is happening. So she told me, I want to... No, have a discussion with you. Come up to the terrace. So we went there and she told, God is not fair. Why? You know what happened? While I was excited this morning, they told 13 of us who were inducted into the company as a, tem as a temporary uh, no, employee, we all were excited and all the 13 will be retained. But then... To our surprise, the company told, the higher management told, we will not be able to retain even one of you. Please pack your bags and leave. <laughs> now, the question is, if God is the one who gave 10,000 rupees two years back, and now Michelle is growing, why would he take it away from us? So that was bothering. So I want to thank the Lord. Again, that evening I was so peaceful. <laughs> I said, Amma, we will pray. If God has concern over our lives and if he has provided 10,000 and if he is going to take this away and he knows that our child is also growing, I know and we know our Lord has 101 ways to give more than 10,000. 101 ways. Even without your job, he will supply. That is what I believe. If he has to take, uh, take it out, take it away, he will have some better plans. So I said, let us agree together this evening that we will not go, that you should not go out and make a case to your managers, to your senior officials that this is what I did. Why didn't you consider it? You don't even talk. You don't even ask. Whatever the Lord wants to do, let him do. So in the next morning she leaves to her office praise be to god amongst the 13 her place alone was retained in that company <laughs> okay from there on our journey continues i'm saying i said to her this is the last day you should be crying for money do you think the lord who has sustained us so far he will not he will make us to beg for money no 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 I had all the opportunity to, to, to collect money from my dear ones. My father, we were you know, living as a joint family right in the beginning of our marriage. So I had my father, I had my brother, his family, all of them were there. But I said, Lord, when I married my wife, I said, you should provide. I should not look after anyone else for money because I want to grow in confidence. I want to trust you. Whether it is lack or surplus supply, I want to trust in you. And God taught us that lesson. What? He run into his presence when you know certain things are 
bothering you. I'm making your life really difficult. Don't go and beg people. Don't go in search of people. Probably you can get help. I'm not saying you should not get help at all. But then your first place where you need to put yourself is God's dwelling place. I've learned a lesson there. I've not forgotten this. You know what? After that period, 2019, I resigned my job. And now we are serving the church Till today, by the grace of God, we have not prayed for money. Is God good? Is He faithful? There is supply, there is shelter, there is security, and there is success when you approach His dwelling place. Because He says, I will put you, I will set your feet upon the rock. That means I will put your enemies down. Whoever is plotting evil against you, don't fear them. Don't fight with them. But rather seek the Lord. That is confidence. If you really trust the Lord, if you have confidence in the Lord, why would you keep running from one place to another? Why would you seek one after the other person? Rather you would seek the face of God. Lord, this is the one thing that I said. I want to seek your face. Number three. Psalm 27, 9 and 10. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior. I want to stop here. It seems as if David started on a right note. He was praising God. He told that, Lord, I desire only one thing to be in your dwelling place, God. I want to put myself there because I believe in you. You will not forsake me. All of those things could. But this statement actually is somehow giving us an implication. What happened to David? Suddenly he's saying, Lord, do not hide your face from me. What happened? Suddenly David is Fearing for his life, it looks as if he has some doubt on the Lord. The reason is why he's saying, do not hide your face from me, O God, is because of the many, many enemies who rose at that time, who were falsely accusing David of things that he didn't do. Many false witnesses came against to report things that actually he didn't do. So now he is, while he's praying, while he's in the house of God, he's thinking that are too many people speaking maliciously against me. False accusations, one after the other, against me. Lord, while I'm speaking to you, don't even hear them out and hide your face from me. What? Because it's not about one or two people, but then, while so many are coming against me by falsely accusing me, I want you to know one thing, God, I still trust in you, but then don't even give an ear to them and hide your face because there are too many people against me. See now the confidence against he has in his God. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive. In all of our earthly relationships, do we have this confidence? The Lord, David is taking the most trustworthy relationship here on this earth. Father and? A mother cannot disown her child. A father is also that kind of a person. Normally it doesn't happen. Right? And he takes this and he says, Lord, even if the most trustworthy relationship here on this earth, even if they forsake me, I know you will receive me. When certain relationships fail, when certain people whom you have banked on, when they reject you, when they show doors to you, 
and you are crying and you are cribbing i really trusted this person so much how can she do this to me how can he do this to me when your relationships are cracking and crumbling would you be able to say lord i am confident of this one thing whomever is rejecting me i know father i don't have control but i know this one thing though my father and my mother forsake me you will receive me do we have confidence in the lord so many times somehow we want to pull those things back right within our own family it's not even sometimes outside how can my sister do this to me how can my own husband do this to me how can my own children whom i fed nurtured took care of them for so many years how can they do this to me would you have confidence in the lord lord i know one thing while i'm doing good things to people who are around any moment any time anything can happen i don't have control over these relationships i don't but i know one thing that any relationship that fails here on this earth one thing that i can really bank and count on is you god i have confidence how many times people reject me i know this one thing that you will receive me confidence confidence are you able to see how confident david was so that means he's saying here in this place i have few hundreds of trained men who told me that we are with you david but even if they fail me seeing the enemy camp that they will plot evil against me to bring me down even if that happens even if my father and mother even if my own men in my camp they put me bring me down i still know one thing that you will receive me confidence in this relationship that you have with god so when you have that kind of a confidence that is why the the word of god says do not put your trust in the neighbor in the day of your trouble do not trust your friend do not trust because you never know when they will turn their backs to you you will be utterly disappointed but that the one who has called us the one who has engraved our names in his palms the one who has uh, set us apart the one who has told i knew you even before you were born you were you were created you were formed in your mother's womb the one who has called us he will not fail so do we have no we all of us here all of us here we will certainly come to a place where relationships there is a struggle in your family in your marriage within your friend circle in your neighborhood it will can anyone say in the last 20 years there was no such struggle for me in my relationship every day because there are expectations on the other person and when that is not met immediately what it bothers us we are crushed in our spirit why would this happen to me i did everything immediately you cry and you creep but one thing will not bother you when you have confidence is lord i don't have control but i have one thing that i will be confident that is about you about the relationship that i have with you that you will always receive me no matter what happens in my life number 4 number 4 Psalm 27 13 and 14 I want all of you to read the scripture along with me okay are you are we all ready yes okay let's do it together i remain confident of this i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living wait for the lord be strong and take heart and wait for the lord confidence he opens up this psalm this poem by saying even if war breaks out i'll it be 
confident. Now he says, Lord, while I'm running for my life, while I'm, while I'm uh, trying to find out some hideouts to hide myself so that I'll get safety and security, while my life is under severe threat, God, one thing I know, it is not only that you will receive me, but I will see the goodness of my God in the land of the living. Today I'm running for life. Today I don't know who is going to rise up against me. What is going to happen? But one thing, because I trust your goodness, oh God, because I have tasted your goodness in the yesteryears, and I know certainly you will not put me here in this place all throughout my life. Times will come, seasons will change, and I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Without that, I will not die. Confidence. Confidence. How many times we cry out to God, Lord, when will a change come? When will things start to change, God? Just keep David as an example. Lord, I know situations are certainly not looking that great at this point in time. And while I'm running, I don't know what will happen to me. But one thing, God, that I will see your goodness. I will certainly see your goodness. So with that confidence, I will still wait. I will be strong and I will not give up because I am certain that my God will enable to see, enable me to see the goodness of His in my life. Do we have such confidence? Can you see how confident David was? It takes so much of heart to, to really have that kind of God because he fully, I'm sure, while you go back and read this psalm again, the scriptures that we read in Jeremiah chapter 17, 7 and 8, it is so true in David's life. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence, his life will be ever fruitful. And his leaves will never wither. He'll always be, be so full of joy. Situations and people, they will not bother because this person's confidence is in the Lord. And I invite you to build God confidence in your life and pray this prayer boldly, Lord, break my confidence and build your confidence in me. All that I want and all that I wish is to have your confidence. I want all of you to rise up to your feet. Let's partake in the table of the Lord. For those of you who have not received the communion elements, if you can just indicate to us by lifting your hands. If you have ushers, can you quickly go around? There are a few hands that are lifted. Yeah, if you can just uh, keep uh, uh, show up just indicate till you receive. Just keep indicating to us. Ushers, can you quickly move into those places and uh, hand over the elements. Rest of the others, let us consider this moment and say, God, if I have confidence in myself, break that confidence. If I have, if I have put my confidence in anything else apart from you, Jesus, I pray that you would give me an understanding, that you would help me to just have confidence in you alone. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Through darkness fills the night. It cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemies underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. No trouble lingers still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind the God of angel armies.
who goes before me. I know who stands behind the God of angel armies. He is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Can we lift the bread in our hands and start to thank the Lord? Thank you, Jesus for the body that was broken for as we truly remember your sacrifice we acknowledge oh father what a great sacrifice it was considering all of us that today we stand together as one body in Christ Jesus because of the body that was broken for us in the cross of Calvary so father we pray that you you would give us ability Father, you would give us strength, empower us to live so that, Father, we can join hands together to bring glory, honor, power, and praise to you that we will become influencers in God's kingdom. Can we eat of the bread together? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Take the cup in your hands and start to thank the Lord. Father, thank you for your blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Father, we remember this is a costliest sacrifice to make us pure, holy. And today, because of the blood of Jesus, we are redeemed. We call ourselves as redeemed of the Lord. We have a relationship that was established Father, a relationship which we couldn't have done anything on our own, but it required the blood of Jesus to make it possible. And we want to say thank you that the Creator God, the, the one who has created us today, you have made, oh Father, union with us through the blood of Jesus. And we say thank you. Father, we pray that Lord, you would allow us to grow in this relationship with you as an individual as a family, as a church on the whole together. Can we all drink of the cup together? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do not throw away the cups. There are bins out there. You can uh, drop the cups in the bin. I want all of you to just uh, sit for a minute. Uh, we just want to welcome the newcomers. Uh, if you say this is the first time here in our service, anyone for the first time? Yeah, if I can ask you, would you please stand up to, uh, to your feet? Can we all put our hands together for these lovely brothers and sisters? A lot of people. Can we do it better? Thank you so much for coming. If you're not part of any other church, you can, uh, you can join our Sunday gatherings. And if you want more details, you can always come and meet with the one of us. We would be able to help you out. So as they are standing, can we pray a quick prayer over them? Father, thank you for the lovely Father a morning that you have brought in brothers and sisters who have come, walked into this hall for the very first time. We as a church, we pray and we bless them in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you would allow them to understand, to gain Christ. And Father, we pray that the blessing of the Lord will be theirs. Even as they walk out, I pray that you would continue to minister to them. Thank you for bringing them into our midst. And we bless them with all of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So before we uh, uh, close the service with benediction, I want you to make a note that there are tabletop calendars out there for sale. Uh, you can pick it up. And the calendars are also available. So we request you to... Uh, Buy and gift it to someone else. Buy it for your own people. May God bless you. Can we all rise up to our feet? All of us together, let's pronounce the benediction. May the love of the Father, grace of His only Son, Jesus Christ, the sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, may He rest and abide with all of us now and forevermore. And all of God's saints said, Amen and amen. Have a blessed and a wonderful December month. I love God to build his confidence in you. Amen.